Okay, we're going to get ready to get started here. Make sure you have your notepad ready and your highlighter and your pen. And if you have your Bible open, open up to uh, Revelations chapter 10. Okay, we're going to begin there this morning. Okay, and we're going to do some exploring. And we're going to do also some deep water fishing okay, as we go from the bosom to the bosom. Okay, we'll be covering a lot of things right here, as you can see right behind me. Okay, we'll be covering the uh, his concerning the throne of God, the rainbow about the throne, the crystal sea, okay, your hope, okay, and also the glory of the Lord. This is the joy of the Lord. Okay, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Every, re every revelation that we receive, again, has to do with another stone and the prophetic path, okay, which we, as the righteous, okay, are walking on okay, by faith. So open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 10, and we're going to start right there. Okay, and here we go. I saw another, and I, and I saw another mighty angel, he says, come down from heaven clothed with a cloud, okay, which has to do with this orb, okay, and a rainbow, okay, which we're going to talk about right over here, okay, you can see me pointing at that, <clears throat> okay, a rainbow was upon his head, and his face uh, was, okay, and his face, and his face was, or his head, upon his head, a rainbow upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, okay, and his feet as pillars of fire, make sure I highlight some of these things right here. Okay, highlight the word rainbow, okay, because we'll be talking about some of these things right here, okay, regarding the rainbow, okay, the, uh, uh, right here, and also the letter, okay, and the word. Okay, and highlight the word sun, okay, and, and from the word sun, highlight the word fire, <clears throat> and get your marker, because I'm getting my marker right here, okay, my nice red marker. Okay, and I like the word C. Okay, as we begin, I like the word C, connect the word C to the word fire. Okay, why are we doing these things? Okay, and why is the Spirit of the Lord working okay, with this symbolism? Well, now let's go to 1 John, or not 1 John, John chapter 1. So keep your marker there. And let's go to John chapter 1. Okay, now remember, keep, uh, keep some of these things in mind here. Now in the Gospel of John, okay, as we're going to, we're going to be uh, exploring okay, where this plan began. Okay, why is it that, okay, <clears throat> that the Spirit of the Lord continually reflects upon these things? Because everything that we reflect upon, okay, and regarding our prophetic path, okay, our reflection goes all the way back to the bosom. A reflection upon these things is actually our destiny. Okay, because this is where it all began. Okay, from the bosom to the bosom. Okay, and that's what we have up here. B equals B. From the bosom to the bosom. So in the Gospel of John, okay, we're going to read here. Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 1. Okay, we're going to see, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, okay, and the Word was God. Okay, I'm turning over there right now. <clears throat> As we get uh, warmed up here. So in the beginning was the word. This was has to do with it originated. Okay, so right here we see the word, the word first word. If you have your marker, highlight the, the these three words right here. Word, word, word. So in the beginning was the word. <clears throat> where this is where we originated. Okay, the word was with God. Okay, and the word was God. Okay, and here we can see his word originated, initiated, and sustained. Okay, from the bosom to the bosom. Okay, all of our level one prophecies continually affirm <coughs> this pattern. Okay, these things. Okay, right here. So in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Now where did this begin? Well, let's look at verse 18. Okay, no man has seen God in any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. <clears throat> the first declaration, all right, the knowledge to be made known, okay, it began right in here. Okay, this bosom. They began right here. This is where the Word originated. Okay, in the bosom. Okay, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. <clears throat> the same was in the beginning with God. 
Okay, all things are made by him, and, was, uh, and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay, this is really a profound thing which the Apostle John is bringing to us here, <clears throat> as he brings to our understanding. Okay, a conflict had emerged okay, in the very beginning, okay, and why God initiated this plan. Now, God initiated this okay, in his mind. Okay, before anything ever came into existence. So this is where the word began. Okay, we call it the Alpha and Omega. Okay, so when we say the word word, <clears throat> we're talking about that which is God's totality. Okay, God's totality of knowledge. God's totality of knowledge, okay, he put within a person okay, in order to communicate this voice to us. Okay, that's why the voice of the Lord is powerful. Okay, the voice of the Lord he is full of majesty. Okay, the voice of the Lord settles the waters. Okay, the voice of the Lord created all things. Because okay, the, the, the word voice has to do with a power. Okay, this power carries the authority. Okay, and this authority okay, is that which is initiates a, uh, a substance. That's why we live by every word of God. Because the word of God is a power. Okay, the word of God is his voice to us. Okay, and that and that has a power okay, to affect change. Okay, it's a vehicle. Okay, whereas we go from from the bosom to the bosom. Okay, so in the beginning was the word. Okay, and this word was life. Okay, but something took place right here within this within this. Okay, up here. Okay, within within the bosom. Okay, that that had to be rectified. Okay, all right. So God created everything from himself, okay, and anything that's less than himself, okay, has to be equalized to himself in order to uh, coexist with him, okay, so <clears throat> every word uh, then became a letter, okay, and a letter, okay, which became a frame, it was then, uh, say, clothed, okay, with a, you see, a light or a color or orb, and that's where we get the rainbow from, okay, um, so every, every letter, Okay, then became a frame and it was clothed in a rainbow, okay, a rainbow of light, which became its house. But everything that God created they was still still in a state of that which is lower than himself, as we also see in the book of Enoch. Okay, whereas Archaz and Adol became the womb okay, of that would carry all these powers okay, into the next dimension. In order to release them, they come into the vessels which you're existing in today for the purpose of proving and uh, accepting the conditions and the terms okay, which he set for us on the other side of the veil. Okay, let's read some more about the veil here. So keep your marker there and read some more things about the veil in the book of Hebrews. <clears throat> and that has to do with Hebrews, and I believe it's chapter 6. Okay, so I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 6 here. Verse 19, that by, well, I'm going to start with verse 18 first. That by two immutable things, which has to do with the covenant of stewardship, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie and to change his record, we might have strong consolation, that is at his altar now, who have fled for refuge, that is again to his stewardship, covenant stewardship, to lay hold upon a hope set before us. Okay, which hope? stewardship and priesthood. Okay, which hope we have is an anchor to the soul. Now keep, keep some of these things in mind. Both sure and steadfast, okay, and which enters into that within the veil. So you know, that, Now this is uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. Within the veil. Now God set the symbolism within the tabernacle. Okay, he put the veil within the tabernacle okay, to show how these things would unfold and that only the high priest was qualified in order to end that uh, into the veil once, okay, not to not particular not, not on his own, uh, you could say on his own wishes, okay, or for his own pleasure, but okay, but for the but it had to do for the people, okay, that the high priest would enter within the veil, okay, for the purpose of establishing a form of communion, a bridge, okay, that's what he's looking for, a bridge. He would provide a bridge for the people, okay, so that God remove his wrath from them. Okay, now we go back to Revelation. We talked about veil. Let's go back to Re uh, Book of Revelation, chapter ten. 
And he said, I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, which is the orb around him. Now, keep in mind also the, 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 the fire and the water. Okay, why God would initiate these things for the purpose of our redemption, the fire and water. A rainbow was upon his head, and his face was, as it were, the sun, and his feet like uh, as pillars of fire. So I highlight the word sun there, and what a prism does, a prism breaks down the rays of the sun and puts them in any particular spectrum called a rainbow. Okay, and that's what we have right here, a rainbow. Now Jesus is as a prism, okay? and everything that comes forth from him on this side is as a, like a color of a rainbow. Okay, but everything on this side is like is, is, is like it's being reversed. Okay, it becomes that which is of, of its origin, a solid form. So if the sun hit the hit the prism, okay, it would, on this side it would project the colors of the rainbow. But if you were if you were to take those colors and put them back in the prism, it would be, it would go back the other way and show its source, okay, which was not broken down. It was a total source. Jesus is our word. Jesus is our total, uh, total source as the Son. That's what we call the Son of God. We see also the book of Malachi uh, that the prophet Malachi uses the Son. Okay, also, S-U-N. <clears throat> Again, the show source. Okay, and the, source the, the Son is a source of life to all things that are under it. And we also, okay, uh, being under the Son of God, okay, receive nourishment from the Word. He is the source. Okay, so everything that <clears throat> came forth from God, okay, what being less than Him, okay, it had to be put within a certain confinement until the equalization would take place. Okay, when I mean by equalization, that has to do with that in engrafting power to make us as sons of God, as the Apostle John brings out. Behold, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now, it does not yet appear where we should be, because we're still in the form of the letter. Okay, but being engrafted with the Word of God, he okay, makes us as equal with God. Okay, also Jesus established this within himself. Okay, he took upon him no reputation to, and also took upon him the form of a servant. Servant, And being, in the, in the, okay, and being within God, he thought not robbery to be equal with God. And okay, I'm going back and forth on that in Philippians. Okay, in the form of God, he thought not by robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. The man of sorrows took upon him the form of a flesh it was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, okay, which were now on this side, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Okay, even, the word even there has to do with the loss of the aspiration to take on our redemption, to become the, to become the record of our redemption. Okay. <clears throat> and this is to bring us back within the veil. Okay, so we, we saw, we read in Hebrews about that which is in the veil, Hebrews chapter 6. This is the veil. Okay. The veil, God put as God put as a, a vortex, and this is where we get these things up here. So let me let your eyes go up this way if you're watching this on video. Okay, every letter is a word, every word is a throne, okay. every throne is a door, which has to do with His name. Okay, and this is what we see here. Okay, every uh, the, we see the letter, the the word, the throne, and we see the door. We're going to explore some more of these things here and go a little deeper. Okay. Now, we're right now we're in the throne room, as we see the angel right here in, in chapter 10 of Revelation. Now, the rainbow, representing the, the diversities of colors, he also represents different ranks, the different ranks of angels. The same thing with ministering spirits. When you see a ministering spirit, okay, we talk about how uh, I just saw a ministering spirit over there, and the color was blue, and I saw a ministering spirit over there, and the color like was red. Okay, I saw a ministering spirit, and it, and it was like a, a flash of light. Okay. These ministering spirits are... Okay, the color that they're flashing has to do with the rank that they are within the rainbow. Okay, the rainbow is also many colors. Okay, but the colors right here, they are as a reflection of the prism, which is the throne. Okay, Jesus is the throne. Okay, <clears throat> he is the one that sits at, at the gate and judges. And this is what God said to Abraham when he swore by himself. Okay, and your seed, and, and your seed uh, shall, uh, shall uh, sit in the gate. Your seed shall sit in the gate. Okay, and sitting in the gate, okay, this is what Jesus is doing. This is what he, this is what he gave as a revelation to Abraham, okay, which he would do, okay, and which those of the offspring, his seed, which we are by faith in, by faith in Jesus Christ as a children of Abraham, okay, will also sit in a, in a throne. 
Okay. So let's explore some more here. I saw a mighty, another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed a cloud, and rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as the sun. We talked about that, and his feet as pillars of fire. You know, there's two pillars. Okay, as pillars of fire, okay, it has to do with the sanctified stewardship and priesthood. Okay, and the sanctified, sanctified steward and priesthood, okay, as the two palm trees, or as palm trees, okay, which the children of Israel, okay, when they came out of Egypt, they saw 70 palm trees, okay, and, <clears throat> and 12 wells, which is a confirmation assigned to them regarding the, uh, the, the stewardship and the priesthood of Moses, bringing them out. That was the first sign that they saw after they passed through the water, and they were under the fire. Now remember, Paul said that. They passed through the water and were under the fire. They are all baptized in the sea. Okay, so we see fire, water. Okay? We also see uh, the, the palm trees and the pillars. They had the two pillars before, uh, before the tabernacle, okay? which also identified the house of Judah and the house of Levi. Okay? Stewardship, priesthood. Okay? And here we see the feet okay? as pillars of fire. And he had in his right hand a little book open. Okay? Now what was in that book? Well, the book was the word of God. Okay? He was going to give something to the inhabitants on this side of the veil. Okay, the word originated right here, and now that angel, the angel we see right here, the, the uh, mighty angel, it was now given the word in this dimension. Okay, this dimension the waters, this dimension the fires. And his feet is pillars of fire, and he had in his hand a little book open. You know, and he set his right foot a fire, of course, upon the sea, which was the waters, and his left put a foot a fire upon the earth, which is a composition of man's flesh. Okay, and he cried with a loud voice. Okay, there, so highlight the word voice there in verse 3. Because the voice is that which is the authority and the power which it establishes. Okay, when, we see, when we say a voice, usually we think about that which uh, exhibits a certain sound wave okay, from, the, from your vocal cords. But the voice right here okay, is a power, which we also, you can read about that in Psalms 29, okay, about that power. Okay, how the voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. Uh, the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. Uh, the, breaks, uh, the voice of the Lord also breaks the trees uh, of uh, Lebanon. Okay. <clears> How <throat> uh, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Okay. How the voice of the Lord is spoken about in his temple. How okay. the Lord sits upon the flood. Okay. All these, this is in Psalms 29. It's really great because it's talking about okay, this particular manifestation okay, and power. Okay. And I cried with a loud voice, okay, which has to do with he preached okay, like a roaring of a lion. Okay, when the Lord, a roaring lion okay, speaks words, okay, or uh, his voice okay, is for the purpose of warning okay, of his presence okay, and to paralyze his victims. And, I cried, and he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars, and when he cries, seven thunders utter the voices. Now this is what we're talking about here. We're talking about the seven thunders and what the seven thunders spoke. Okay, those things which the Lord says to John, Okay, not to pin them down at this time, because at the time of the revelation, okay, this what the voice is going to be revealing is what I'm speaking to you right here today, concerning this prophetic path, okay, the origin, okay, that which was initiated, and that which is being sustained. We are now sustained, all those of faith are sustained by the Comforter. Why is it important to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and why did God give us this Comforter? Well, we can read more about that as we adventure back here in the book of John, the Gospel of John. Okay, so let's go back to the Gospel of John here, and let's continue to explore. Okay, so we saw, uh, we looked at verse 18, John chapter 1. We talked about the word as origination, where, where, the, where the plan of God originated in the bosom of the Father before anything was created. As you read through the scriptures, these particular things will start popping out at you as what Jesus said. Okay, from the beginning, okay, from my Father, I am coming to the world. Again, I leave the world and go to my Father. Okay, these things are, uh, which the Lord is communicating to us shows us the journey which all those of faith are on. Because okay, <clears throat> every word, voice that God speaks is a I, a prophecy, into the bosom of the Father. This is what we're going to read about also in the book of Ezekiel. So we're going to explore some of the book of Ezekiel today too. So hold on your seat okay, as we go to Ezekiel chapter 1. We'll be talking about here of why of, of why these particular beings, the wheel, the, the, the wheel, not a tire in a car, okay, but it's an entity. Okay, an entity is a vortex. 
Okay, and it opens up okay, into another dimension like you would see a whirlpool. Okay, a whirlpool will opening up. Okay, it was a wheel within a wheel, and the wheel is full of eyes. Every eye okay, is as a voice. Okay, every eye is a voice, and the power is in the wheels. So let's explore that in Ezekiel here for a moment. Okay, so again, keep your marker here in the, the Gospel of John, because we're going to come back and keep talking about this. Okay, in the Gospel of John, but let's go to Ezekiel and chapter 1. And let's read an interesting description here, okay, which Ezekiel sees okay, about the wheel. <clears throat> so we're in chapter 1, and I'm going to start with uh, verse 16, or actually verse 15. I'm going to see where it begins here. Yeah, verse 15 is where it begins this, where it starts pinning this new thought. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the, by the living creatures, with, uh, with his four faces, okay, the appearance of the wheels, now the word wheel is not a tire, okay, but as a, like I said, it's an entity okay, which overlaps itself okay, and the boundaries of it expand beyond the human eye, beyond, uh, expands beyond eyesight. Okay, and that's why it was so terrible to him because when he saw, the, when he saw these entities okay, in the appearances okay, as they were manifesting themselves, it was beyond human expression okay, or earthly language. That's why God gives us a language to communicate with Him with. They call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God gives us a language to communicate to Him. Okay? And we're communicating to Him on the level of His entity, okay? praying in the Spirit. That's why praying in the Spirit is necessary in regarding, okay, uh, is, is as a bridge between these two dimensions, okay? and it's a power okay, that uh, is bringing us into a reality of a dimension, okay, which we're, we're, even though we're in this kingdom of the flesh, Yet at the same time, we're in the kingdom of the spirit. The appearance of the wheels and their work was as uh, like in a barrel, okay, and they had uh, each, and they had, uh, and they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel, okay. It's a dimension within a dimension, okay. A wheel within a, it's like a hub, like a hub cap on a tire, okay, as an example. But that's they weren't they weren't tires on cars. And when they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. Okay? And as their, and and for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful. They said they dis, they 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 expand and dissipated. Okay, and their rings were full of eyes. So that might highlight the word if you're there in Ezekiel chapter one, full of eyes. Now every eye is a voice. Okay, every eye is a voice, and that voice is a power. That's why the the, the eyes of the Lord are over those righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. Okay. God communicates to us by this power which gives us eyes to see into this vortex. Now the wheels are full of eyes. Now the book of Enoch, we can see okay, a little more, get a little more detail about the ministry of these wheels. Okay. Because the wheels themselves, as I explained earlier, okay, is, is, is an entity that opens up like a whirlpool. It's like, a, it's like the door in your house, except the door in your house is liquefied. Something that you would see in a, in a Hollywood movie. Okay, where the where the uh, where the door b would become liquid and begin spinning around, and suddenly you'd be able to just f move right through that. Okay, that's a veil. Okay, so the wheel is as a door to the veil. Okay, the wheel is within the throne on the, on the crystal sea. Uh, we're going to talk about that also about the crystal sea. See, it's like a sea of crystal. Okay? It wasn't as like waves like we would think. Even though I, I made that little illustration right here to try to make to differentiate. Okay, between the uh, the uh, the eye of the Lord, the throne of the Lord, let's see the crystal sea, okay, and uh, also the lightning, the thundering, okay, that will come forth from this. Now God had to create a dimension in order to test these letters. I'm still on the same subject. The word was broken down into letters as light is broken down into a prism, through a prism into a band of color of a rainbow. Okay, the word okay is broken down to letters. Every letter became an entity, okay, and every entity was clothed with a light okay, that identified its spectrum okay, of the rainbow. Okay, that's why God uses rainbows okay, to help us to, okay, uh, to associate okay, an invisible kingdom okay, <clears throat> with, uh, with this dimension. God gives us tokens down here. Okay, and every, so that's why everything God created in this dimension okay, is created from a letter of himself 
Okay, and it speaks and prophesies of God Himself, okay, as the tree, the grass, okay, the sky, the clouds, the lightning, the thunder, okay, the seasons, the changes, the events, okay, the harvesting, okay, the sowing, okay, the uh, the design of the soul itself, okay, reflects okay, that uh, the the origin in the bosom of our Father. Everything that God created was from the Word. Okay, when it came out from the Word. It was a letter. So if you take the word word and break the word word down, you got W-O-R-D. Now, every the W is a letter, the, the O is a letter, the R is a letter, and the D is a letter. Okay? So a letter. We're, I'm going back this way. A letter, a word, and a, or a throne, or a door and a throne. Okay? A letter, a word. Now, this is what we're, this is, this, t this talks about our journey. Okay? From the bosom as a letter back to the bosom as the word. Okay. Nothing can enter into God but God Himself, as light only can enter into light. Okay. So every letter okay, that came from the Word okay, was less than the Word, okay, because a letter standing by itself possesses no, uh, no power, it has no direction to it. Okay. But the Word has a direction to it, it has power, it has wisdom. The Word is wisdom, as the Apostle Paul writes about the Lord, okay, uh, that Jesus Christ is the, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Okay, when he's, now, we can see that the, the Spirit of the Lord elected to give the, unto us the, these words okay, to help us to understand His plan. If you read the Bible apart from the plan of God, it won't make really that much sense to you. But it will challenge the moral code and the state of your conscience because it's holy. It's holy. It's inspired and is the Word of God okay? because it carries with it it's a mystery and a, and a story. A mystery and a story are contained in these things called the mystery of the Torah. Okay? Which, of course, okay, well, <clears throat> you will get deeper understanding about that. That Every, every, letter, okay, every letter of the Word okay, has a story to it. Okay? And God put that into a form which we can read. Okay? Knowledge. And by his, by his knowledge my righteous servant should justify many. That knowledge is his word, okay, and that word joined to a letter, okay, becomes an entity, becomes a power, it becomes your salvation. That's why we live by every word of God. Okay, we have to be this. The word itself has to be engrafted within you. This is what Jesus is talking about. I'm with you as the word of God, but I shall be in you as the word of God. Now, when I am engrafted into you as the word of God. You shall live forever. And that, the Comforter, he's going to call that word the Comforter, okay, is going to assist you through transition okay, from one dimension to another dimension. Okay, as if you're, if, uh, like, just to say the Comforter okay, or the Word is like a spacesuit. It's going to assist you to survive in another environment okay, that, that, that the flesh of the letter cannot survive on its own. Okay, or if you were going to the, deeps, uh, the depths of the ocean, okay, you would put on a uh, a wetsuit, okay? and then you would be able to okay, go down within that dimension okay, and explore that dimension, okay? and you'll be able to uh, remain within that dimension a certain period of time. Okay? So the Word of God okay, is your shield. Okay? The Word of God is your shield. The Word of God is your refuge. The Word of God becomes your house. Okay? The Word of God becomes your vehicle. That means it's a power. Okay? It's giving you mobility. We're living now by every Word of God. Okay? Which before you're just living by the letter, okay? you're uh, by the letter. And what does the scripture say? The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Okay? That's why we live by every word of God. So we talk about the appearances of the wheels right here, okay? as the as the um, the prophet Ezekiel was describing to us. And I was only making some quick references here to to, to continue to uh, draw your attention to some of the, the the illustration which I have up here. Okay, why we have all these things up here. Okay. So seeing the picture up here, we can see this is where the this is where it all began, in the bosom of the Father. Okay. Right now we're at the stage of the initiation, okay. whereas the Comforter, okay. whereas the Comforter right here is assisting us through the time of, of the time of testing. Why did God do this in the first place? Every letter has to be tested for is for its um, okay, for its consistency. Because when God created all these things, He put them within He put them within an environment of testing. Okay, when He was over here, okay, over here in the bosom, the letters 
Okay, when, when God communicated to them, now uh, I'll give you another illustration of that. Okay, the Lord, see, the Lord gives us another example when Jesus was giving, uh, was talking about Lazarus and Lazar Lazarus and Abraham's bosom. When Lazarus was in Abraham's busy, bosom, there was a chasm between him and the rich man, a chasm. Okay, now that chasm okay, is as, as like, a, a, like a fence okay, or as a veil. Okay, there's something that's concealed there, but there was a communication made. Now the word of God in the bosom of the Father communicated to the letters, okay, which were on the which were on the other side. Okay, none of none of these letters yet had any sin because God did not set a standard yet. Okay, none of, none of, none of these letters over here neither had righteousness because God had not set a standard yet. But the letters which He created, which became which were entities and were clothed in their own light. As the, as the scriptures bring out, every man walks in his own light, okay, which has to do with the, uh, uh, the, has the colors of the rainbow. Okay, every entity stood within the color of their own, of their own being. Okay, but, but, but when the Lord was in the bosom right here, okay, in the bosom of the Father, okay, the Son of God revealed to every entity right here, okay, the, uh, you can say the, the progress of his plan and that which he was going to assign to each letter. He said, every letter wanted to be a word, but the Lord says you cannot be a word yet, not until you're tested. Okay? And when you're tested, you're going to have to, you're going to be tested according to the commandments that I give you. That's why these are the commandments which he gave from the very beginning. As the Apostle John says, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you have from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Well, where was that old commandment they heard from the beginning? In the bosom of the Father. This is where the challenge took place. In, in the bosom of the Father, okay, there was the protesters and there were also those which were the, uh, the conformers. The protesters and the conform, conform, those which were conform, conforming okay, were those which also Jesus talks about okay, in his earthly ministry. All those, Father, that you have given me, I have lost none but the son of perdition, the protester. Okay, stay with me. All this took place in the, uh, within the bosom of the Father. The letters wanted to rule with him. The, the letters wanted to be equal to the Father, but without first being tested or overcoming. That's why the Lord created a dimension for this. So he took the letter from the mention here out of the house, because Paul talked about, okay, when if you were to, if this house of if, if this body of yours were dissolved, you have a house of God in heaven waiting you. That's where it's at right here. Jesus also talked about mansions. Okay, <clears throat> he said, I prepare a mansion for you. Okay, the mansion is prepared by obedience over here. Okay, if you abide in the vine, the preparation is taking place over here. If you're not abiding in the vine or on this side, no preparation is taking place on this side, and your house will be left to you vacant. If the house is left vacant, that means somebody else is going to move into it. Okay, and this is where Jesus gave the parable of the talents. The man that buried his talent in the aspiration on this side Okay, will not get the reward of maybe 10 cities on this side. Okay, and so that's why the, everything over here, uh, what, you're, what you're tested in over on this side, okay, which has to do with the dimension of the flesh, okay, will be rewarded over here if you overcome on this side through the veil. All right, so from Ezekiel, again, we talked about that. Let's go back to the Gospel of John. Okay, the bosom. Verse 18. Uh, but let's talk about verse 16 here. Okay. And of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. Grace. How do I the word fullness there in verse 16? What is that fullness? Okay. Well, it has to do with the word. When the word, if the word is engrafted within you, you're going to be partaking of his fullness, which is the benefits you'd be taken on in the inheritance. In the inheritance. As heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Now the letter cannot be an heir. Okay, until the word it becomes a word, the letter, as you see up here, cannot become a a, a throne until it be first becomes a word. Okay, then, when you're a throne, you become a door. Okay, okay a door. Whereas everything that proceeds out from you is a voice. And everything that comes out uh, from the voice carries a power of creation. Okay, the voice of the Lord. Okay, it has uh, it has a a positive and negative effect. Okay, so in the bosom of the Father, everything that he created was of himself. Okay, and we can see that in a, uh, also in the, um, the epistle there of Colossians. 
So I'm going to jump to Colossians here just for a moment. You can jump with me okay, to the book of Colossians. Okay, in essence, this is in Colossians chapter 1. Okay, and so in Colossians chapter 1, we start here. Um, and verse, let's start with verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet, and I had the word meet there, competent in his fullness, to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints of light, which is on the other side of the bosom, or on, in the bosom, on the other side of the veil, who has delivered us from the power of darkness, which is on this side of the veil, okay, the lower, okay, we have the higher, we have the lower, okay, at the uptown and downtown, I guess you'd call it, he has delivered us in the power of darkness and has translated us in the kingdom of his dear son. See the word translated. We translated by the fullness. You cannot be translated by the letter because the letter only stands in the power of your, of your moral code. That's why God, when, when God created man, he put with him a signature of the natural for the natural expression. Okay, but that which is to be, uh, but, but he also, uh, in order for us to communicate with him, we have to engraft, or engraft of the signature Okay, of the spiritual expression. And that's the expression of faith, the spiritual expression. Okay, so let's go on here, verse 13. Has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us in the kingdom of his dear Son, and whom we have redemption through his blood, okay, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image, who is the image of the invisible God on the upside, and the firstborn of every creature, as his oath. And uh, for by him are all things created, because being the oath of God, Everything proceeded out from him. That's the same thing with like your fingers to the hand, the hand to the wrist, the wrist to the arm, the arm to the shoulder, the shoulder to the, to the torso. Okay. <clears throat> Everything has, its, uh, has a connection for function. And by him were all things created, okay, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Okay, whether it be thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And I'm in verse 17. See the word before? Okay. Jesus is the prototype of everything that will come in existence. Okay. That because God put everything, everything that was going to be expressed would be a portion of himself. Just like the gifts of the Spirit. The, the government, the truth, and the Spirit. The gifts, the callings, the grace of God. Prayer, preaching, and prophecy okay, originated within the bosom. It originated with the word. Okay. But God now, okay, uh, in, this, in this dimension, he, he sows these things. Not everyone's an apostle. Not everyone is a prophet. Not everyone is a pastor, or not everyone is a, a pastor or teacher or evangelist. So we can see how the how the, the ray of the sun, okay, is how the ray of the sun, if it comes down through the prism of Christ, is broken down into many different utilities. Okay, the, as we see the first group, second group, and third group. Okay, we got three, three, three. Okay, the gifts, the callings, and graces, government, truth, spirit, prayer, preaching, and prophecy. Okay, each one of these uh, gifts which he gives to us is broken down in, in, a, in a respective order, okay, and or, or also in a, well, we, you could use it this way, okay, as a, a band of light, a different band of light, okay, so that when you put these all together, it's supposed to represent him, his word. But if any one of these is missing as a strand from a cord, okay, then it's weakened, okay, and it's not partaking of his fullness. You have to have all three in function, okay, in order to be tethered to the throne or the Godhead. <clears throat> so he is before all things, verse 17, and by him all things uh, consist. He is the head of the church, the body, the church, okay, who is the beginning. Okay, here we go back to the beginning from the bosom to the bosom. The firstborn from the dead, okay, then, and that, uh, all, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Then the preeminence has to do with the expressions, okay, the voice. Okay, in him is the voice. He is the uh, the voice and authority of every expression, every dream that you have, every vision that you have, the word of knowledge you have, okay, every manifestation you have, okay, is he has now the preeminence. That means you have to yield to that. As a servant yields to his master and the flesh yields to the spirit, we serve Christ by these powers, these, uh, by the voice of the Lord. We live by his voice. That's what it means to live by faith. We're living by the power of God. Okay, not that of the earthly, but, of the, but as the heavenly. Because the angel had his foot upon the sea and upon the earth. Now the foot has to do with a, a symbolism of conquering. As putting the foot upon the neck of your enemies. He put his foot upon the sea on the neck of his enemy. Because it was lesser than fire. And he put his foot also a fire upon the land. The composition of Adam, which Adam was taken from. 
putting he put his foot upon the neck of the earth okay and by that he is the conqueror the word of god is superior to every letter of man okay? man lives by uh, those which are blind live by the lesser light those which are have their eyes open are living by the greater light so god put the symbolism within the sun and the moon okay the sun and the moon as the great the sun is the greater light and the moon is a lesser light okay one reflects the other so let's go back now to the Gospel of John. Now we were just in Colossians, if you want to make a note on that. In Colossians chapter 1, we're on verse 17. Okay. So we're, we're, letting, we're letting our hooks down and we're going, to be, we're going to be fishing for some marlin out here. Okay, as we go now into the Gospel of John, into the, in the deeper waters. Okay. Now it's fun to fish off the dock, okay. but it's, it's more fun if you, can, if you throw out that um, throughout that line there and catch something of a, a 400 pound marlin I guess some teenager caught a 400 pound marlin there when he was fishing okay and it was uh, it's like a, it's a trophy it's a trophy but look how much look how much uh, atomites d delight okay in uh, in the unusual and unusual things like that okay like a 400 power, uh, pound marlin okay and uh, catching something like that more in comparison to maybe Okay, uh, uh, something of a shallow water, a shallow water bass. Okay, it would be shallow water, considering that was as deep, as uh, deep, uh, deep sea fishing. All right, let's go to um, uh, and now and back. I'm back in the Gospel of John here, and and Jesus is talking about the Comforter. Okay, as in John, uh, chapter fourteen, okay, verse twenty-six. But the Comforter, which the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, now keep the word name there because this is the authorization of ownership. It's a stamp of ownership. The comforter okay, is a sign okay, and a stamp or seal of ownership. Those which don't possess the stamp, sign, or seal of the ownership don't belong to him. They are the protesters. Okay, these are the protesters which from the very beginning okay, showed that they were uncomfortable uh, regarding keeping okay, the terms of this covenant. And regarding that, now God, in the bosom, He charged each letter. He says, "You cannot remain here in the state that you're in. Neither can you pass from me to you, and I, uh, because uh, you you cannot pass from that dimension to this dimension because you're not equal to myself." Okay, so the letters I'm going to give you as a scenario here. Okay, the letters protested. We want to be just like you, Lord or Father. We want to be just like you. Okay, so the yellow said, the yellow letter said, I want to be like God. But God says, how can you be like me, saying, I am the word, and I am the total light? Because okay, so yellow is just a strand, okay, or small spectrum of my light. And then the green letter said, I want to be like you. Okay, and the Lord said to him, to the green, to the green letter, you can't be like me because you're just one band of light. If you're to be in, if you're to pass from here, from there to me in your, in your present form, you would be consumed because you will not be able to bear my totalness in your smallness. Okay, and then the blue letter said to him, I want to be like you. And the Lord says, you can't be like me in your present state, okay, as, a, as one band of color. If, for, for if you're to pass from that dimension into this dimension, okay, you would be consumed. Okay, so the letters protested and says, how can we be like this? He says, because if you, if you want to be like this, you're going to have to leave this dimension, your present home, this house that you're in right now, which, of course, that's what awaits you, that, that house. You're going to have to leave the house that you're in, but I'm comfortable here. Why can't I just move from this dimension to that dimension in the shell that I'm in, okay, in this protective shell? Because God said, this is what my plan is. Okay, if you want to be equal to me, you have to be engrafted with me okay, in order to possess the same, the same volume and veracity of light, which I am, to be equal to me. Okay, for I am that I am, okay, the eternal of the eternal one. Okay, I am that I am, ever present. Okay, so uh, so Jesus speaking here was speaking from the position of the of the bosom, from the throne. Okay, the Bible has to be interpreted from the from the position of the author. Okay, now we look at authors, okay, as being okay, just uh, holy men. Okay, and just at, uh, they get an idea and they're just writing something down. Okay, but the holy man, okay, penned by the Holy Spirit. Okay, and the Holy Spirit okay, is that entity which God is. So we have to read these things from the position of the throne. 
in order to and, and to interpret them from the position of the throne, we have to also interpret them in, in the in the light of this plan, the path which we're walking in right now, the prophetic path, which is also known as the way of the Lord. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost and the Father, was sent in my name, of uh, which be a stamp seal of ownership. He shall teach you all things. Well, what things is he going to teach us? Well, we'll get to th we'll get to that, and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. Okay. So the things which I where I said unto you, it was actually the beginning here, when Jesus, when Jesus Christ came into this dimension, when he came through the veil, and came into this dimension of the lowest of the heavens and the darkest of the heavens, which I have over here, we have the, we have the earth, okay, and the earth is in as in the lowest of the waters, okay, we have the waters, and the earth is the lowest of waters, okay, God came into this dimension into into one of our own shells to communicate to us. Okay, and to draw upon that seed which was planted with us within the, within the letters on this side. So the Lord said to the letters, okay, the, uh, the letters said, but I like my brightness, and, okay, and, I, and I desire to that my brightness would be equal to you, okay, regardless of what you, um, uh, regardless of this condition which you're putting on us. But Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, now he said that in that side of the bosom, he said in this side of the bosom. If you love me, keep my commandments. Oh, we love you, Lord. Okay, and it says, all right, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I, now I need to prove that profession of your love. How are you going to do this? Okay, well, first of all, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, everything that I said unto you, okay, I'm going to take my words and I'm, gonna, I'm going to congel them. Okay, just like I would take water and freeze it and make it ice. Now I'm going to take the water, freeze it to ice, and I'm going to call that a seed. I'm going to take that water, freeze it to ice, make it the seed, put the seed in the conscience, and when it comes time of my enlightenment, okay, it's, that seed is going to begin thawing within you, and suddenly you're going to be coming to a realization, okay, that you know me, okay, you're you become you're going to be coming aware of my presence, they, of these conditions which I set upon you on this side, this side of the flood, this side of the veil, okay, this side and this dimension, over here. Okay, some protested, and the majority did protest. Okay, that they wanted to maintain, see, the uh, the excess, the excellency of their light, okay, and the power of their own letter. Okay, but they want to carry that into Father's bosom. But we know that the scriptures say God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. You cannot exist within my bosom in the state that you're in. But I'm going to put you in another house to test you. But before you go into this other house, I'm going to put you into a trance of sleep. Now, how do we know that? Because this is what God did to Adam in the symbolism, okay, of this joining. Because Adam, okay, had to be put into a trance of sleep because he was in an, in, in the, at that point of time in this dimension, he was in an eternal state. Okay, being in an eternal state, okay, uh, he couldn't be tested. So God had to put, okay, a token of testing in the Garden of Eden, which was perfect. The Garden of Eden was overshadowed by the Shekinah. The Tree of Life was uh, taking up its, uh, its presence there okay, and overshadowing uh, the majority of the garden. Okay, he had all these things in that garden there. And he also, there was another thing that was planted in there, which God cursed. And that was what Satan planted. Satan planted the vine. Okay, and God put a curse on that vine, which Satan planted, okay, and which is called the Tree of Good and Evil. He says, I, God put a curse upon that, for the testing of Adam's will. Okay. Do you love me, Adam? Well, yeah, I love you. I did not want you to eat of this tree over here. The first test from, Adam was the first one tested from the other side of the, of the veil. Okay. He was over here. Okay. You say Adam was a band of blue with a letter, with a letter of band of blue. So God took that, the band of blue, the rainbow, put it into a body and shell in this dimension over right here to be tested. How would this test come about? Okay, which knowledge are you going to use? Are you going to are you going to use the knowledge of the lesser light, or are you going to use the knowledge of the great light? Which knowledge we use? Are you going to use the knowledge of the letter of the word, or the, the word itself, or are you going to use, use the knowledge of just the letter? Okay, are you going to use the knowledge of death, or are you use the knowledge of life? Okay, because we live by the knowledge, and by His knowledge we are saved. This is what the prophet Isaiah wrote about. And by, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. <clears throat> and he will birth children by that knowledge. A, a knowledge. 
because God uh, God works okay, within this uh, okay, within this environment with knowledge. That's why we are the higher uh, the higher uh, beings. Okay, we live by knowledge, not by instinct. But the signature of man works with instinct and logic. Okay, but that which is of God works with reason and the power of the Spirit. Okay, that's why you must be born again, because as long as you're living by the letter, you're living by the letter of the, the see, of your moral code which is less than light, and you want your own bright, your own light to shine bright. That's the boasting of man. That's what Satan did. His own brightness deceived him. Right? We read about that. His own brightness deceived him. And Satan was cast out of heaven. He had rank, he had beauty, he had wisdom, and he had brightness. And his own brightness and wisdom deceived him to come against the plan of God, to usurp the plan of God, to replace the word with the letter. So Satan was saying, uh, what Satan was saying of himself, that God which you have showed us, okay, within the vortex through the wheel, the visions of the wheel, okay, which was overwhelming to us, okay, this create this creature which you have created, which, which is going to be created, okay, which you're going to bring forth the inheritance to his shell, okay, is unworthy, okay, <clears throat> seeing that he's going to be of the waters, but we are worthy because we are the fires. Okay, and being of the fires, we are superior being the elder. He is going to be younger than us and unwise. And I can prove it to you that he's going to be unwise. Okay, that he will not be that he will not be able to be qualified to come back into your bosom okay, as you promised. All right? Well, this is where the, uh, this is where the iniquity was born. Okay, now you can understand okay, well, where iniquity was born, okay, and why God put that letter within that shell called Satan. So God appeared to his angels as fire. But remember, God, you can't see him because he is crystal, as crystal. Now, let's, let's look about that here in, this, uh, in the book of Revelation. Let's jump in the book of Revelation as I'm discussing this here. Revelation chapter 22. <clears throat> in Revelation 22, we're going to see, we're gonna see um, the, the word here about crystal, okay, as we also in, in other chapters in Revelation. But in Revelation, we're going to see... Uh, the word crystal and how the, why the Lord uses this. Now, crystal itself doesn't possess any color because it's pure. Light and darkness didn't exist until God created it. Light and darkness did not exist until God created it because he was as, uh, as, as pure as crystal. <clears throat> then when God created a light, they, that's what was reflected. Okay, to the angels, he appeared as flame okay, because his angels are as flames of fire. To the humans, he appeared, uh, appeared as flesh. Okay, because, he, because he is the word of God, everything that was created was created from a letter of God. Okay, and God's name is every letter of creation. Okay, so now try to pronounce the name of God. Okay, and you will never be able to do it because the lips of flesh cannot pronounce that which is an eternal value. The lips of flesh do not have... Okay, the, we, do, we can't live long enough to pronounce it. Okay, and, the, and the verbiage okay, of his word, which is in his bosom, far exceeds that Okay, of our own form of communication of the ABCs from A to Z okay, the ABCs it's way beyond that so God simplified it for us okay I'll, I will give you a name to call me you can call me Lord God or Lord God Almighty I will give you a name to which okay, uh, your faith will relate to me okay, the other gods okay, uh, the other gods I've already given names to them Okay, but but my but my name shall be established for covenant only. That's why we don't live by the covenant of the covenant of Michael. We don't live by the covenant of Gabriel. We live by the covenant of Christ, okay, the Lord God, the Lord God Almighty. So in chapter twenty-two of Revelation, verse one, he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal. Now this is the crystal sea which you see right here. Okay, this this crystal sea is going to be removed from this dimension on this side of the veil and this whole dimension is going to be brought into another dimension that's why God is going to clean this whole dimension out okay that there be there's going to be no more sea and no more night and no more no more need for the sun and the moon because this dimension is going to become it uh, it's going to become his habitation see in this dimension the sun and the moon only existed as a letter okay and in this dimension right here okay it had its function in this dimension, uh, on this dimension of the bosom of the Father, we only existed in his thoughts, the eternal thoughts of God. Because every thought became a letter, and every letter became an entity, and every entity now has an expression and a conscience. 
So God put God put a conscience within within the soul, okay, and that soul carries with it a will, okay, and it's that will that's going to be judged, the will of choices. So now back on this in this side in the bosom of our Father, okay, the letters protested, okay, they didn't they did not want to leave their habitation, okay, but they want to but they wanted to be able to progress outside of the residences. But God says, no, you're in a house arrest right now. You cannot, you cannot progress a bond, uh, beyond the boundaries I put on you because that's not the environment that we can do this in. Okay? The only way you can do that is you come in myself. You have, to, you have to come outside of that environment, which I put you in, to come in this environment. You have to be born. Same thing with a, a baby in the womb. Okay? The baby in the womb, you don't give car keys to the baby in the womb because the baby in the womb hasn't entered into the dimension where it can express that knowledge and gain the skill to get the car keys, okay? And that's the same thing. The letter, okay? The letters weren't uh, weren't matured. They weren't. They uh, they had to be tested, okay, for the reward. Okay. And so in the bosom of the Father, okay, uh, the majority of the letters protested. Okay? The minority of the letters, okay, uh, were consenting to the to these conditions, but God could not allow some to leave and some to go. He had to put all of these letters, okay, because he represented himself into this dimension and then seal it off. They sealed it with a veil. We talked about that veil. Okay, Christ, Jesus Christ is the captain of our salvation and he will lead us, uh, at, uh, uh, the righteous, back through the other side of that veil. Okay. All right, so here we see in, in chapter 22 of Revelation, he showed me a pure river of law, water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. We got fire and we got water. Okay, we got flesh, we got spirit. Okay, and here we have the crystal. Okay, we'll read some more about that in chapter 4 of Revelation. This, uh, so I'm just going to jump back just for a second in Revelation and show you some more about that. Okay, in Revelation chapter 4. All right. <clears throat> in, in Revelation chapter 4, we, we see the same thing. We see the word rainbow in verse 3. And, I, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and sardine stone. And that's the throne he's on. Immediately I was in a spirit, and behold, now we see the, in verse 1, I had, I'll have to start with verse 1. We have a few minutes here, so make sure you get your sacrifices ready. After this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. So keep the word door down, or highlight the word door. Okay, and, the, and uh, a, door was, a door was open in heaven. The first voice which I heard was as a trumpet, okay, which is like, as a voice, talking with me, which said, come up here. Isn't it interesting, a trumpet talks? Why well, he's talking about the voice, manifesting itself talking with me, which said, come here, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. So John, the Apostle John, okay, was able to stand within the vortex, okay, the vortex of the wheel, and see the future of the church. Okay, just like uh, Enoch saw. Enoch also saw underneath the wings of the throne. Okay, he saw within the future and pinned down things, okay, which were thousands of years in the future to take place. Names of people that will come into existence, okay, come into a body, okay, uh, uh, what they would be doing, okay, uh, world leaders, okay, uh, <clears throat> uh, from, from the least to the greatest. And immediately I was in a spirit, behold a throne. So how did the word throne there? Was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. That's what the Lord did here. Coming from the bosom, he, came, he carried a dimension and put a throne there. Okay, and when he, mark, when he put the throne there, he was marking a boundary, which we call the veil. The veil right here. So I put the word veil. <clears throat> Okay, and within, with, uh, within that throne is the crystal sea. Okay, the crystal sea, okay, <clears throat> you know, what, what it really is, is a wheel. Okay, the, it was called the visions of the wheel. Okay, and these wheels, okay, which are spirits, okay, would open up as like, like a vortex, a door, okay, and show, uh, uh, and, and show um, okay, revelations of the things which were on the other side. Uh, what they're showing is that they're showing reruns. Everything that's going to take place in this dimension was taking place in this dimension. Okay, everything taking place in this dimension was taking place. What took place in that dimension? These are reruns. These are only reruns. Okay? <clears throat> so the Lord knows. Okay, uh, all those that will accept Him. Well, how do He know that? He knew that from the other side. Okay, He knows everyone. He knows everyone that consented, and He knows everyone that protested. But He put the protesters in a body. He put and He put the consenters in a body. Gave, he gave each one of them a signature for function, okay, and now and then he gave them he gave them a power, okay, a power of expression by putting him in this dimension. 
Okay, so in chapter 4, we're still read about the word crystal here. Um, all right, here we go. In chapter 4, around about the throne were 24 seats, and upon the seats I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white raiment. And okay, we're going to get to the word uh, crystal here. And they had in their heads crowns of gold. Okay, out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning. Okay, before the throne, which was seven spirits of God. That's another topic in itself. Very fascinating. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass and a crystal. So how do you wear a sea of glass, glass is crystal? In the midst of the throne, around about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Okay, and we're going to have to stop right there. Not that I want to stop right there, but we're going to have to stop right there so that you can prepare your sacrifices. Now, after Apostle Solomon uh, reads your sacrifices here, then, then I'll be closing. So I'm going to pass the mic right now over to Apostle Solomon. Hey, I believe he's in. And uh, Apostle Solomon here will be reading them, and then I'll, I'll be closing.